Hello friends, I am Himanshu Sharma and I work as a scientist in Umiya University, Sweden. And today I am starting uh, a series of uh, videos about my experience about doing postdoctoral research in Sweden. And today I want to give you uh, brief highlights about my general experience over the past five years that I've spent, uh, spent here doing my research. And I want to give you a flavor of how it is to do research in Sweden and what you can expect and what you can find here, the challenges and pros and cons of being in Sweden for postdoctoral training. So Sweden, as you would already know, is one of the Nordic countries uh, located in the northernmost regions of Europe and is regarded as one of the countries with very high standards of living and uh, a very nice, very high on the happiness index as well. So it's a very nice place to be, uh, to raise a family uh, and to work as well. Uh, and uh, it is surrounded by with a lot of beautiful nature and the society is generally very inclusive. Uh, so it is a fun place to be and a very nice place to live. In general, uh, Sweden is also home to some of the very uh, best universities around the world. Uh, as you would know about Stockholm University, Gothenburg University, Karolinska Institute, and also Umeå University among uh, the best in the world for uh, best in the world. Uh, and in general, there is a, a very strong focus of uh, uh, basic sciences, both fundamental and translation in Sweden. And then uh, this can be found across all fields of natural sciences, uh, chemistry, life sciences, physics, etc., etc. And then there is also a very strong focus on technology and engineering oriented sciences. Uh, also, there has been a, a decent wave of interest uh, in, uh, in investment in Sweden on material sciences, uh, design uh, and architecture, which also has been one of the classical fields in Sweden, and uh, of late uh, artificial in intelligence, cyber security and data driven sciences has also taken the central stage in terms of the funding. Next, I want to talk to you about uh, some of the other aspects and I will break this video further into uh, each of segments. Uh, and let's talk about what are the kind of postdoc positions that you can find in Sweden and what you should expect when you apply uh, for a position here. So generally, uh, postdoc contracts in Sweden begin with usually a two year period and can be extended depending on how and where the funding is coming from. And generally, uh, there are two kinds of uh, main categories of contracts or the kind of positions that you can be hired upon. One, uh, which pays you in terms of the stipends. And these are generally tax-free uh, uh, stipend that you get. Uh, and the other is a more of a, a salaried contract, which also comes with social security contributions and also uh, contributions towards your uh, uh, retirement and uh, uh, things like that. But this is a much broader uh, topic and uh, if you want me to talk about this in more detail uh, about the pros and cons of each contract, uh, please drop a comment and I'll be happy to make a different video about it. But uh, uh, based on the kind of contract you are hired on, uh, it can also depend uh, on the eligibility of these uh, contracts. So for some uh, funding agencies, it can be that uh, you get your uh, PhD or you have defended your PhD in the last three years but it is also common to have many contracts or many funding agencies which are very liberal with these requirements and then even if you have five to seven years of experience you can still apply uh, to these positions and you will still be competing with uh, the fresh postdocs uh, or fresh PhDs uh, and on the note of the funding agencies uh, Sweden has a very broad variety of uh, funding sources so there are public funding agencies the Public science, uh, the Swedish uh, research uh, science scientific research council, then medical foundations, uh, which are funded from the public money, but then there is also a very very strong component of uh, private foundations which fund, and of course it's also possible to bring in international uh, European uh, network grants or funding grants, uh, if you write your own uh, uh, project proposal and then bring that money as your own uh, postdoctoral uh, uh, salaries and. Uh, some of the other money associated with consumables and things like that. Uh, and then uh, finally, it is possible to have some long term contracts which uh, uh, sort of gel into staff scientist positions, but these are rare. 
uh, and are much lesser as compared to the two year or four year postdoc contracts. Uh, and now let's shift to how you usually apply and where you can apply. So most of the Swedish universities, they have a very open way of communicating their ads. You can just go to their websites and work with us and look at open positions. This is very clear, especially in Omeo University website or the Stockholm University website. And they also put out advertisements on LinkedIn, uh, nature, uh, nature uh, uh, job ads and things like that. So it's very easy to find uh, the openings here. I would recommend you just uh, check the lab websites or the university websites for this and all applications happen online uh, you submit the documents which are prescribed there uh, and I would recommend that you do submit uh, the documents precisely as they have been asked for uh, this and this reason being that the academic system may vary a little from your home country but uh, please read through the uh, instructions carefully and then uh, give all the documents which have been prescribed as essential uh, and finally, uh, once if you have been shortlisted, you will be called in for uh, an online, usually an online interviews. But if you make the final uh, list of people who will be, who are the most potential candidates, it is possible you will also be invited here in person. Uh, and I would recommend if you have a chance to do that, please come by, look at the labs and the environment before you make your final decision. So uh, next, let's talk about the academic environment. In Swedish universities and your workplace that you are expected to join here. Uh, so Sweden usually, as I said, has some of the world-class universities which come with a uh, very strong research infrastructure and also uh, the universities and the departments uh, come with some sort of a research support staff which may be at a level of your labs or at level of the departments so that you can have more focus on just doing your research. Of course there can be some things that you have to do uh, in the lab for maintaining the daily basis but uh, the universities do come with a very strong research infrastructure and some support staff. Uh, next the hierarchies in the Swedish academic systems are very very flat and this is opposed to what uh, we see in a lot of uh, Asian uh, universities that uh, there is a very clear hierarchy between uh, the professors, the assistant professors, the postdocs, the PhDs and things like that. But here uh, the system is much more flatter. Uh, it's uh, it's very useful in terms of uh, making new connections in your workplace. It's very easy to go and just uh, knock on doors of uh, a very senior professor and then talk to them. Uh, and this also makes them more approachable uh, to build collaborations, uh, to ask uh, for things which uh, are not clear in your work and things like that. And this also makes uh, uh, a very close training possible between the people you work with. And I think that's really important for people who are just setting out on their postdoctoral journeys and have to gain new skills. So this is a very positive note on the Swedish flat hierarchical system. And then uh, the universities really have a strong interdisciplinary focus. Uh, and it is possible to get funding for sometimes very high risk projects. And usually the funding for generally normal or high risk projects is usually thought to be very stable and predictable in terms of when the money will come in and how much it will come in. Uh, so generally I would say the academic environment for conducting research is generally very nice. Uh, and again, as I said, this is also a very broad topic. So if you need, if you have questions on uh, any specific aspect, do drop a comment and then I will be happy to expand on that. So next I want to give you a little insight in the very important aspect of postdoctoral training that is the career development support that you can expect uh, from your workplace in Sweden. Uh, and this is very, very important for uh, the short period of you know time that you want to spend in a postdoctoral uh, training because you know eventually you want to move to, you want to remain in academia or you want to move to the industry and is it possible to get the right kind of career support that you need. So uh, generally, uh, there is a very strong focus, at least in the labs I have worked with, there, is a, there has been a very strong focus on uh, working with the postdocs to get a long-term support for their careers. And this comes in various forms uh, in terms of regular mentorship programs or regular uh, 
talks with your superiors or uh, your uh, lab heads or department heads for that matter so there is always a possibility to approach anybody in the uh, leadership or uh, your superiors to uh, talk about uh, the trajectory of your career or your research and what you would want to do in the long term uh, next uh, the universities and the departments also have some sort of support which comes uh, in handy for securing grants and funds so you can get sort of uh, grant writing support and support for uh, implementing those grants as well and then there is dedicated funds uh, which I, we have seen here for conducting and uh, traveling to different career workshops and also for attending conferences and going out uh, on generous travel support for uh, attending national and international meetings which again is very important uh, on building your own network uh, either in the industry or the academia for the long term. Uh, next, uh, I think one of the other aspects of building a better network in Sweden is also about the very flat hierarchies. As I said before, so you can really go up to somebody and uh, have a chat with them about your work or the plans that you have in the future. And because of this, uh, it's possible to ask for mentorship from somebody whom you may not directly work with. Uh, given this very open communication that happens between people, uh, I think it is possible to build those bridges and uh, uh, use them to move your career forward. Uh, and finally, one of the very unique things, or I, I would say uh, nice things about uh, uh, some of the Swedish universities, at least at Umeå and some of the universities in Southern Sweden is the postdoctoral societies and associations that exist. And these can be very crucial uh, when you are uh, moving, uh, when you want support uh, or information when you are moving to Sweden or you want to move between universities in Sweden, or you want to reach out to somebody in a network, uh, for also for long-term career support. So for example, there is the Umeå Postdoc Society here in Umeå, uh, and then there are uh, there is a broader umbrella of Swedish uh, uh, network of postdoctoral associations, which uh, is made up of all the uh, uh, postdoctoral societies which exist in Sweden. And then uh, the, uh, this network is also part of the wider umbrella of the European postdoctoral networks. So there is this sort of uh, an, uh, organization, a very soft organization that, ha that is present uh, and uh, it's very active in terms of organizing meetings and conferences and networking events between the postdocs and uh, external uh, uh, members of the academia and the industry. So again, this would also be very important and useful for postdocs who are coming in from a different uh, academic system or uh, from a different country. And so if you have decided to move to Sweden, there are some very nice aspects of living and working here. One is the very strong focus on the work-life balance, which you can find here, uh, and uh, you're encouraged to maintain that. The positions usually come with a generous uh, leave uh, for both normal uh, leaves that you have vacation days and also a very generous uh, parental leave uh, package which comes with these positions so because of this very interesting uh, balance uh, focus on the work-life balance and uh, the leaves that you can get uh, i think it is possible to uh, maintain a very active lifestyle here in sweden where you can have easy access to the nature uh, the seasonal sports uh, and the very uh, beautiful and accessible activities that you can go out uh, and do maybe uh, in every aspect of nature that you can find here. Uh, next, uh, most of the working hours are flexible and of course this has to be worked out with your superiors and of course it has to work in the broader uh, uh, scheme of things which your work is concerned with. Uh, but I think it is possible to find flexible working hours uh, if you are uh, maybe doing research in some of the more flexible uh, areas like life sciences or uh, I don't know for competition or that for that matter. Finally, uh, the workplaces also come with uh, a good support on the human resources department uh, and uh, ergonomics and comfort and security uh, of the workers or the research is also taken care of uh, in a very good manner. So overall, I think it's a very good uh, environment to live uh, and work in. Uh, and I would only have positive things to say about uh, it on that matter. Uh, but of course, these are all the things that I have uh, talked to you about on the positive sides of working in Sweden. And of course, uh, every system, academic system or country comes with its challenges and uh, some of the other recommendations that I would give you. And uh, 
so that's what i want to focus in uh, on the next part of uh, next segment of this video so one of the things uh, of course people can be concerned about when moving countries is about the language requirement so generally it is uh, possible to get away without learning swedish here for uh, a very long period of time uh, because all the people here speak very uh, fluent english and especially in the academic systems it is really uh, possible to get without get away with without learning swedish but this could be a very useful skill especially if you are planning to move to the industry or planning to apply for positions which are more long term in that matter and this would also help you to uh, make the most of your stay here uh, and i would say that uh, one of the challenges can here here can be finding uh, accommodation so please talk to your uh, lab members or your superiors or the department support staff before you actually plan to move here it can be sometimes very difficult to find housing on short term and this can be a concern uh, you know if you are moving with a family so please do keep that in mind uh, the next uh, thing is also keep bear in mind is the contract that i mentioned to you they are usually short as most of the other post doctoral positions uh, and along with that there can be a bit of uh, Uh, sluggishness on the swedish migration system so this is what you want to keep in mind before you want to have your final days planned and when you want to move uh, and this also adds a bit to the overall uncertainty because of the temporary nature of the contracts and the slowness of the migration system it can be a bit uh, concerning and uh, driving your anxieties to very high levels when things uh, when you have to make long term plans uh, and in terms of uh, my recommendations uh, i would be like it is possible to find all, all kinds of foods but uh, bring your own spices if you can uh, which is not difficult but uh, is nice if you have it from your own end uh, and there is pos it is possible to get access to uh, most kinds of cuisines uh, especially in the bigger cities uh, but do come prepared for the weather it and the uh, uh, very uh, peculiar lighting conditions especially in northern sweden where it can get very very cold uh, can go up to minus 25 and minus 30 degrees celsius and can be very dark or very bright depending on what season you are living in so be mentally prepared for that and find things that help you cope up with that uh, and finally my recommendation would be uh, please uh, uh learn to cross country ski especially in the northern sweden it's a fantastic activity very good for your health and a very unique thing to do uh um, try the swedish cheese the vasterbotten cheese um and i would also recommend swedish licorice uh it sort of grows on you like uh, the swedish lifestyle uh, you won't like it at the first but uh, then it really grows on you it's uh, really very nice uh and with this i hope you have enjoyed this video Uh, if you have more uh, comments or if you have any concerns and if you would like me to expand on any of these aspects please let me know in the comments below uh, and please share this video with anybody uh, you think uh, will be interested in knowing about uh, taking an, up an academic position in sweden uh, and please like share and subscribe uh, and watch out for more content in the future thank you very much and all the best uh, for your future